The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means fun for both young and old, thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. But under the big top, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth, you see only part of the story. Much of the real drama takes place behind the scenes of the circus, or in faraway places of the world where this master of the big cats has journeyed, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. This is an experience entitled Jinx of the Big Top. People frequently ask me if I have any pet superstitions, and I can honestly answer that I have none. But circus life and circus performers have taught me that superstition is something which can't always be laughed off. Strange things sometimes happen which would make even the most skeptical wonder. For instance, there was the summer a few years ago when we'd been playing several towns in Iowa. Things had been going from bad to worse with a series of tough breaks in the form of accidents and bad weather. Then, after an evening performance during which our star trapeze performer was injured in a fall, things came to a head. I was in my dressing room talking to my wife, Harriet. Clyde, don't let it upset you so. It was just an accident. Sure, I know. And it's the seventh accident we've had in the past two weeks. But why? Nobody's to blame for any of them. You even had one yourself last week, remember? Sure I remember. I got off luckier than any of the others, just a few scratches. Scratches, you call them? With 15 stitches in your leg? Well, that's better than getting a broken back like Darcy tonight or having a foot smashed by an elephant like Wilson or... Oh, Clyde, don't keep reminding yourself of those things. Uh, Tomorrow's another day. They'll have the lot torn down and loaded on the train in a couple of hours. What you need is a good rest, dear. Things will look better in the morning. I hope you're right, but these accidents aren't the only thing that's bothering me. This weather's the worst I've seen in years, Harriet. Well, we can't do much about it, I'm afraid. That's just it. We can't seem to do anything about anything. I'll admit it, frankly, it's getting me down. I don't blame you, dear. But worrying won't help. I know, but I can't help it. Some of the performers give me looks like I was responsible for everything. The morale is getting pretty low. Maybe they'll snap out of it, Clyde. Come in. Oh, hello, Hank. Mr. Bailey, I'm... Uh, well, I'm afraid there's trouble brewing over in the menagerie tent. Don't tell me some of the animals are loose. Oh, no, sir, but... Uh, some of the performers are meeting over there. And unless you can talk them out of it, a bunch of them are going to quit. What? Quit? Hank, what are you talking about? Why would they quit? Well, they're scared, Mr. Beatty. They, well, they think the show is jinxed. Our story continues in just a moment. But first... And now, here is Clyde Beatty and Jinx of the Big Top. The thing I dreaded became reality when Hank told me some of the performers were going to quit because they thought the show was jinxed. Quickly, I raced over to the tent where some 50 people were gathered. I saw at a glance that a fellow named Jeffries, one of our best tight wire walkers, was the leader and spokesman for the group. As I approached, the excited conversation of the others dwindled to a murmur. What's this all about, Jeffries? Why isn't this tent being taken down? Why are you all standing around here? I was just coming to tell you, Mr. Beatty. Some of us have had enough. We're quitting as of tonight. Now, wait a minute. Now, we're sorry, Mr. Beatty, but we want to get out before something happens to us like it has to the others. This show is jinxed. Jinxed my foot. That's fine talk from an intelligent group of adults. I know we've had some bad breaks lately, but there's no use being superstitious about it. I'm afraid it's too late for arguments, Mr. Beatty. Our minds are made up. But what about the rest? You can't just walk out in the middle of your contracts and leave the others high and dry. We can't go on without all of you. We don't like to do it, but it can't be helped. If the rest had good sense, they'd get out now, too. Get out and do what? They couldn't get on with another circus. It's too late in the season. Well, might as well get out now or later. You can't keep going with the kind of houses we've had in the past couple of weeks. You've got to have better weather than this to break even. Now, wait a minute. Does this circus owe a single one of you a thin dime? Well, does it? No. No. 
Don't get me wrong, Mr. Beatty. I wasn't saying you haven't always paid good wages and on time. But with this jinx following your show, you can't last much longer. Why not let me worry about that? You'll all have jobs and you'll all be paid as long as you're a part of this circus. But we've got to stick together and get out of this situation. Don't you see? It's the only way. We'd like to stick, Mr. Beatty, but when a circus is jinxed, there's no use asking for trouble. I tell you, this circus isn't jinxed. Now listen, all of you, stick it out with the rest of us. If anything more happens that you could blame on a jinx, then I'll call the whole thing off, too. Is that a deal? Good. Fine. Thanks to each of you. And now let's get this lot torn down and loaded on the train. We're heading for Shenandoah at 1.30 this morning. Well, the train's all loaded, Clyde. Hadn't we better get aboard? Yeah, I guess so. Now, why so glum? Everything's working out all right. You talked everybody into sticking, didn't you? Sure. And the rain stopped. I hope it stopped for all summer. Oh, I have a feeling things are going to be looking up from now on, Clyde. And you should adopt the same attitude. Okay, honey, I know you're right. I'm sorry. I guess I've been pretty hard to get along with lately. Oh, no, you haven't. But I know you haven't been feeling too well with all these things on your mind. Oh, you're even looking thinner. I wouldn't be surprised if I've dropped a couple of pounds at that. Hey, you got a penny? Mm, why, yes, why? There's a weight machine at the corner of the depot. Let's see if you're right about my weight. All right. Ah, here. Thanks. You want to try it first? Oh, no. I haven't lost anything. I've been eating all the desserts you leave. Remember? Oh. Oh, well, what does the card say? Hmm. You were right. I've dropped four pounds. No, oh, you'll get that back in no time now. Uh, what's on the other side? Let's see. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. My fortune. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Read it. You are one of those rare individuals upon whom Lady Luck is constantly smiling. Your good fortune is shared by all those with whom you come in contact. <laughs> oh, Clyde, what are you doing? I'm trying to get my penny back. I've been gypped. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you'd be asleep by now, honey. Oh, I tried to, but I've been restless. Where have you been? Oh, I was up with our accountant going over some facts and figures. Not exactly a cheerful pastime. Oh, I suppose you noticed it's raining again. Raining is right. It's practically a cloudburst. I suppose we'll be setting up again in a sea of mud. Oh, now we're still quite away from Shenandoah. It may not have rained there at all. I hope you're right. What was the town we just passed through? Oh, that was Creston, I think. Remember when we played there a couple of years ago? Creston? How could I ever forget? Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> it was at the afternoon performance in Creston that Congo knocked you down and pulled you around the arena, wasn't it? Yeah, by the seat of the pants, yet. <laughs> that was one of my most embarrassing moments. <laughs> <laughs> remember how the crowd applauded? They thought it was a routine part of your act. Yeah, I remember one old gent even complained because it wasn't repeated during the evening show. <laughs> Why don't you teach Congo to do that for every performance? It would be a sensation. <laughs> I'll work on it. If you'll buy me a new pair of pants for each show. <laughs> All right. It's a deal. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you still got your sense of humor, Clyde. Oh, I feel better having a little laugh for a change. I'd almost forgot. Clyde! Clyde! Brace yourself, Harriet. What's happening? It's a wreck. Oh. 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 Harriet! Uh. Harriet, are you all right? I... I think so. Good. Thank heaven the car stayed upright. What happened? Did we run off the track? I guess so. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh, thank you. Come there. on. Let's get outside. Oh. Looks like all the damage must be up ahead, Clyde. Mr. Brady, some of the sleeping cars up ahead turned over. Have you seen Doc Miller? No, but we'd better find him quick. He should be in the car behind ours. I'll run back and see. Hurry, Hank. Let's get up to those overturned cars. Right. What about the animal flats, Hank? Well, I don't think any of them went over, Mr. Beatty. You better go back and make sure. Then come back to the sleeping cars. We've got to help those people. 
I made my way quickly to the overturned cars. As I approached, I could hear the frantic screams of those trapped inside the smashed and twisted wreckage. The next few minutes passed in feverish activity as several of us helped free those who were imprisoned. When everyone was accounted for, Dr. Miller assured us that nobody's injuries were too serious and there had been no fatalities. Luckily, the railroad ran next to a highway and several passing motorists drove the few who were injured into nearby Creston. As the confusion subsided, I saw the train conductor approaching. Well, I've seen worse for this, Mr. Beatty. Uh, this one's bad enough to suit me, thanks. What caused it? Broken rail. The first half of the train got across okay. Well, I guess we should all be thankful we came through it as well as we did. What had caused a rail to break that way? Oh, hard to tell, Mr. Beatty. You can't figure those things. Just tough luck the way I look at it. Yeah, tough luck. I seem to be cornering the market on that little commodity. Huh? Never mind. Probably be two or three days before you can move on. They ought to have a wrecking train out here before long, though. No hurry. I'm afraid we're not going much further anyway. Oh, it's not that bad, Mr. Beatty. You'll be playing your date in Shenandoah before you know it. Well, I uh, guess I'd better get on. If you see my wife down that way, tell her where I am, will you? All right. Oh, here you are, Mr. Beatty. Hello, Jeffries. I've been looking for you. And I've been expecting you. Go ahead, say it. Your jinx wrecked our train, so now you and the others are free to go. You agreed to that, didn't you? Sure. I said if any more accidents happened, you could all pull out. Well, we've had a butte here, so you win. Well, it ain't the way we wanted it, Mr. Beatty. It's just, well, once you're jinxed like this, no use fighting it. Yeah. I'm almost beginning to wonder if you aren't right at that. Well, I won't try to hold anybody. I'll cancel out the rest of our dates. Well, and... maybe next year things will go better. Sure. I can hardly wait. Yes, Harriet. Oh, I thought you'd gone back to our car. Hello, Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, Mrs. Beatty. Oh, am I interrupting? Please? Oh, no, no. Everything's all settled. Well, I, uh, I, I'd better get back. I'll, I'll see you later. What's the matter, Clark? Is he still talking about a jinx following us? Yeah, but we don't have to worry about it following us anymore. What do you mean? Because it looks like we're not going anywhere. This seems to be our last big show. Quite a closing, huh? I'm sorry, Clark. Thanks, honey. I still don't believe in jinxes, but I guess this just wasn't our year. Oh, well, at least we can be sure of one thing. What's that? We've had all the bad luck possible, including a train wreck. From now on, things ought to be looking up. Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! Uh, who's that? My tank. Mr. Beatty, the last animal flat. Well, what about the last animal flat, Hank? One of the single cages was yard on. What? Did you find it? Yes, and the door was busted open. Nero's out! Nero! Oh, Clyde, that lion's a killer! We will continue with Jinx of the Big Top after this message. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and Jinx of the Big Top. After a series of unexplained accidents coupled with a run of bad weather, the Clyde Beatty Circus was faced with a crisis. Some of the more superstitious performers were convinced the show was jinxed, and they threatened to quit. Clyde talked them into sticking, assuring them that if any more accidents happened, he wouldn't try to hold them. Then, just outside the town of Creston, Iowa, while speeding toward Shenandoah for their next engagement, the train was wrecked. And after the injured were cared for, Clyde's assistant brought more bad news. An animal cage has smashed open, and the ferocious lion, Nero, has escaped. This is awful. Nero, loose. What do we do, Mr. Beatty? That's just it. What can we do? It's a cinch we couldn't find him while it's still dark. It won't be dawn for nearly an hour, Clyde. I know, but we're helpless until we can see something. Hank, you stand by here and be ready to go when I get back. Harriet, you'd better stay here, too. Where are you going? I'll have to catch a ride into Creston. We've got to get word around town and to the farms around here that there's a lion roaming loose. <laughs> Are you the sheriff? Yeah, sure I am. And you'd better have nothing short of a murder to report. Getting me out of bed this time of the morning. I'm afraid there may be several murders to report if we don't hurry, Sheriff. Huh? Come over that again now. What do you mean? I mean there's a lion loose just outside of town. I see. A lion loose. It, 
Wait a minute. Are you dreaming or am I? Look, Sheriff, I'm Clyde Beatty. I have a circus. We passed through town about an hour ago. Our train was wrecked three or four miles west of here. One of my big cats was sprung loose from his cage. Holy mackerel, you don't say. Can you arrange to have the word spread so people will be on the lookout for him? Oh, why, sure. I, I can do that all right. But uh, we better get some men with rifles and go shoot the critter. I'm hoping that won't be necessary, Sheriff. By the time I get back to the train, it'll be light enough to go after him. I think I can get him back without having to shoot. Well, I, I don't if know. If you'll just have the telephone operators call the farms around here and notify the people to be careful, I think everything will be all right. And after they call the farms, they better get the word around town here. Yeah, I'll get them started. Great guns, a lion roaming the countryside. Boy, he's liable to kill anything in sight, ain't he? That all depends, but he's a plenty rough customer. Well, I'll explain things to the telephone girls. Uh, anything else we can do? You might pick out a few men who are good with a rifle and have them standing by just in case they might be needed later. It seems to me that'd be the easiest way to start with. Sure, it'd be easier, all right, but lions are mighty hard to get these days, and I don't want him shot unless it's absolutely necessary. All right, it's your show, Beatty, but you better know what you're doing. I know what you mean. Thanks for the help, Sheriff. I've got to get back to the train and start after him now. I'll see you later. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed for us, honey. I will, Clyde. But I know you and Hank will find him. When we do, we'll try to keep him cornered some way. We'll send back word as soon as we can. I'll wait here with the cage boy. We'll bring a portable cage whenever we hear from him. Good. You all set, Hank? All righty, Mr. Beatty. I'll carry the arena chair. Okay. I've got the whip and blank gun. Let's go. See you later, honey. Good luck. And be careful, Clyde. <laughs> Hank and I started after the big cat, and I was thankful now that it had rained earlier, for that gave us an easy trail to follow. The prints of Nero's huge paws led directly into a field of waist-high corn. He hasn't had time to get too far yet, Mr. Beatty. No, he couldn't go very fast in this mud. Looks like he's headed for the creek over there. He won't try to cross it, though. That'll make our job a little simpler anyway. But we better hurry. <laughs> You were right, Mr. Beatty. He's turned. Now he's going along parallel to the creek. He must be getting close by now. Not close enough, Hank. These tracks are at least an hour old. <sighs> hey, there's a man up ahead, over by that big tree there. Come on. Maybe he's seen Nero. I doubt if he'd be standing there if he had. Hi there. Well, you folks are up and around pretty early, ain't you? They're going fishing? No, we're looking for a... The first time I ever see a man carry a cheer along when he goes fishing. We're not going fishing. We're hunting a big African lion. Mm -hmm. You're sort of lost, ain't you? This year's Iowa. We know that, but there's a lion around here somewhere, and we've got to find him. I see. <laughs> you aiming to whip him to death? Look, mister, this is no time to be funny. We're from the circus, and our train was wrecked this morning. One of my lions escaped from his cage. Here, take a look at these tracks. <laughs> Jumping Jupiter, a real sure enough lion. Yes, we thought you might have oh, seen... Oh, why in thunder didn't you say so? Let me out of here. <laughs> He's a lot of help. Come on, let's follow these tracks. Come on, Hank. We gotta move faster. That cat's made a beeline right for this farm, Mr. Beatty. So I see. I just hope he's done what I think. Uh, what's that? If there's any stock in that barn, he's probably in there gorging himself. Maybe we can get the door shut and keep him there until they can bring a cage over from the train. Well, that's where his tracks lead, all right. See? Yeah. Hank, run down and get that barn door shut before he decides to come out. I'll hurry to the house and see if they've got a phone I can use. Right. We'll get him, okay. I could see a light burning in the kitchen and guessed that a country breakfast was in progress. I hurried to the back door. Good morning, ma'am. Do you have a phone I could use? Why, uh, yes, we got one, but it's on order. Has been for a week. Oh, then you weren't told about the lion that escaped from our circus train. A lion? What was that? I haven't time to explain now, but our train was wrecked and one of the lions got loose. We've tracked him here to your farm. What? what now, it's all right. He's gone into your barn and my assistant's got him locked in by this time. There's nothing to worry about. But, but my husband's in the barn doing the milk and oh, he'll no. be killed. <laughs> My heart was pounding as I raced for the barn and found Hank standing just outside the closed door. Hank! Hank, is Nero in there? 
Sure is. I heard a couple of snarls. Hank, there's a man in there. What? Give me the chair and whip. I've got to go inside. But Mr. Beatty... Open the door and slam it the second I'm inside. See that truck over there? Yeah. Get to the train, bring a cage and some of the boys. Understand? Yeah, I got it, Mr. Beatty. And good luck. Okay, open up. I slipped into the dimly lit bar and heard the door slam shut behind me and then... Help me. Do something, mister. Don't move. Nero, get back. Nero. Nero continued to glare at the man. The muscles in his haunches bunched to spring. If only I could get between him and the farmer before he attacked. I started slowly toward a point to one side of the vicious lion. Then I saw something which gave me reason to hope. A ladder at the farmer's back led directly up to an opening in the haymow. Maybe. <laughs> Cautiously, I circled around a feed bin in the center of the barn. I'll try to get between you and the lion. When I do, climb up that ladder and don't waste any time. Don't worry. I won't. Nero now turned to watch me as I approached from the side, murderous hate showing in his narrowed eyes. Then suddenly, he looked back at the man, and I knew he'd spring before I could get between them. With all the strength at my command, I threw the chair. <laughs> up the ladder! Hurry! Now, my own safety was plenty to think about. Nero hurtled toward me in a mighty charge. <laughs> I jumped behind the feed box, and the big cat shot past. Then began a grim game of tag, with death for me if I lost. Around and around the feed box, Nero chased me, and I was barely able to keep out of reach of his murderous claws. I watched for an opportunity, and at last it came. Nero lost his footing for an instant, and in a split second, I raced to the ladder and up to safety as I heard him crash into the wall below. <laughs> You all right, feller? Yeah. I'm okay. And happy to join you. I, I was coming down here to milk, and I heard an awful commotion. They run in, and there was Bossy, dead. Uh, How did that there lion get in here anyways? That, my friend, is a long story. <laughs> been almost as confused as the farmer was. He ran in the cage without any trouble, almost as soon as we pushed it in the door. I'm glad he decided not to be stubborn. I don't think I'd have relished trying to chase him into it. Well, he's safe enough now, on the other truck. Yeah, and the farmer was darn reasonable about the old cow. Only cost me $50. So you gave him an extra 25 just on general principles. I'm glad it was only a cow that was killed. So am I. For a minute there, I wasn't so sure. But now I've got to face something that's almost as bad as Nero. I don't understand. The gang. I dread saying goodbye to all of them, even the ones who started all this jinx business. <laughs> well, it's not funny. As a matter of fact, I... Hey, what's happened? Doesn't look like there's anybody around the train. Oh, there's Hank standing outside the diner. So they've all pulled out already. Couldn't even wait to say goodbye. Well, let's go pack up. We might as well beat it, too. Glad you're back, Mr. Beatty. Hi, Miss Beatty. Well, at least you haven't pulled out, Hank. Thanks. Thanks? For what? Nobody's pulled out. <laughs> this train's as deserted as a cemetery. Well, I know, but... It's okay, Hank. You don't have to sympathize. Miss Beatty, you haven't told him? No, I really haven't had a chance. What's this all about? Well, I thought you knew. We are playing Creston for a couple of days until we can get rolling again. What? That's right, Clyde. Everybody got together and decided they didn't want to just sit around and wait while, while the train was being fixed. But I, I don't get it. I thought everybody wanted to get away from this circus. They all thought it was jinx. Well, here comes the man who convinced the others they were wrong. He can explain it, Mr. Beatty. Jeffries. But he was the leader of the whole bunch. Hey, Mr. Beatty, better get your stuff on the truck and into the lot. we got a show to do in three hours. So I hear. But what about your jinx? After this accident, I thought you'd be more convinced than ever. Oh, I still think we had a jinx, Mr. Beatty. But it's gone away. We're okay now. I suppose this accident was a stroke of good luck, then. Yeah, it sure was. After you went looking for that lion, we found out this is a pretty lucky circus after all. And what made you decide that? Well, the conductor got a message from the railroad company. The rain washed out a trestle bridge just a couple of miles up the line. 
If we hadn't hit a broken rail first, well, we might all be dead now. Well, I'll I be... should have told you, Clyde, but it's a nice surprise, isn't it? Surprise is no word for it. I'm overcome. So you see, Mr. Beatty, our luck has changed. We're all going to forget the jinx and put on the best circus in the world. How does that sound to you, Mr. Beatty? Well, it sounds great. No more bad luck. <gasps> what was that? Oh, oh, Clyde, I was powdering my nose and dropped my mirror. Oh, no. <laughs> Clyde will be back in just a moment to tell us about his next adventure. But first... And now, here is Clyde Beatty. When most people think of a plantation, they visualize an old mansion surrounded by cotton fields in the deep south. But when I think of a plantation, my mind goes back a few years and I remember a strange, exciting experience in Guatemala on a banana plantation. We'd gone there to try to capture the only animal of its kind that I've ever heard of, half tiger, half leopard. You'll know when we get together next time why the natives named it the ghost cat of Guatemala. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show was produced by Shirley Thomas. Jinx of the Big Top was written by Robert T. Smith. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.